Well, good morning and a happy Monday morning. It is April the 20th. There's a whole new world out there waiting for us, people. What a great one. Yeah, great, uh, great day for sure. Good morning, Sherry. How are you this morning? And Robin, nice to see you. What a beautiful morning out there, huh? Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. 8.58 on a Monday morning. Good morning, Dad. How are you this morning? Glad you're up and at them. Not on a golf course today, huh? <laughs> well, they pretty much got Florida. You guys are pretty much locked down too, aren't you? Everybody's, everybody's pretty much locked down at this point. Good morning, Roseanne. Glad you're watching this morning. Hello, Stevie. Congratulations for getting up and at them and out of bed. You've been up for hours probably, haven't you? Yeah, well, it's gorgeous out there. I'm looking out a few clouds, but uh, I uh, opened, the, opened the back door and have the screen open and the window open uh, to the screen. And it's, yeah, it's just gorgeous out there today. Beautiful. Good morning, Frank. God bless you. Thanks for the, Frank, thanks for the kind words this morning when my mic was on pre-service <laughs> yesterday morning. Stuff happens, you know, stuff happens. Just making sure it all works, and by golly, it was working. Oh, mercy. Well, we got a full week this week. I think we've got a little more non-essentialism we need to be uh, working on and getting out of our system. I think that's pretty much the plan. <clears throat> oh, mercy. Yeah, well, it's a gorgeous morning out there, that's for sure. I think it's what, like mid-40s, I think is what it is right now. Good morning, Alicia, up in Montana, God's country. What what town are you guys up uh, at in Montana again? Where, where are you guys at up there? <clears throat> is it April showers today? Is that what's going to happen today, Jim? I trust you, Jim. You, you've, you've, you know more about weather than I do, that's for sure. Aubrey, did, uh, did the boys, uh, did the gang stay out in a tent last night? Is that, uh, was that my understanding? <clears throat> Good morning, Cindy. How are you this morning? And Candy, God bless you. Gosh, I sure miss all of you. Good morning, Stephen King. God bless you. Vicki, happy Monday to you. Yep, it's a gorgeous one today. Absolutely a gorgeous one. <clears throat> Good morning, Shannon. And Nancy, nice to see you this morning. Good morning, Sandy. God bless you. Take care of the Swede this morning. Oh my. Well, a gorgeous day. Mid, I think mid to upper 40s is what it is right now. Headed to, uh, headed to nearly 70 today. Now, the other day they said it was supposed to be a high of 68. And at one point I looked at my, uh, looked at my thermometer and it was 73. And I thought, hey, that's, uh, that's not bad. We went out for a walk. It was wonderful. That's right. Helena, Montana. Sure. Helena, Montana. That's right. <clears throat> we got out for a walk yesterday afternoon. It was just too nice to stay in. We stayed six feet apart from everybody and everything. So there you go. In fact, I try to stay six feet uh, for even from the camera here, as a matter of fact. I just, I like, I like feeling safe. You know what I mean? Michael did and had a nice dinner by the fire. What was on the menu last night, fireside, for the, uh, for the, for the Turleys? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious what, uh, what, what made for a good fireside meal. There. Would have been a good night for a camp out last night. Good. Well, terrific. Well, we're just kind of waiting around for just a couple minutes. Let, let folks get logged in and signed in. Jana Ruoff, good morning. God bless you. <clears throat> we're just kind of hanging out here in the church lobby. Uh, Keith Dahlgren, I saw your name scroll by. Good morning. Welcome. Are you back in, uh, are you back in the area or are you... On some uh, excursion being essential this morning. Uh, you're an airline pilot. I'm, I'm thrilled to know you're still flying. That's, uh, I kind of, you know, have wondered how, how busy you would be during these days. So thank you. It's good. Thank you, Ruth and Danny. God bless you. I miss you guys. And it's good to be wearing short sleeves this morning. Good morning, Tamara, the essential one. Love you. Good morning to uh, the Schaefers. Glad you're watching. Glad you're here. Well, I, you know, it goes without saying, but I sure miss you and look forward to seeing more than just your name. That'll be great. In fact, it's kind of like name tag Sunday, only without you is what it kind of seems like uh, to, to me uh, reading your names. But I miss you and look forward to, to being together. But I know you feel the same way. You know, I've, I've got a, 
I've got to always keep in check. Um, this is this is what it is. This is what we've got. This is where we are, and uh, not allow myself to become frustrated with uh, when do we get to get our life back because we don't know. And you know what? If we start thinking about that when we don't even have a date in place, uh, we're just going to be some very very frustrated miserable people. So uh, you know what? Here we are, and the Lord has a work uh, that he wants to do in us and through us today. And so uh, that's, you know, for me, that's just a good good perspective. Good to, good to keep check on, on, uh, uh, on what I do know and not uh, to speculate uh, because it only leads me to be incredibly frustrated that I want my life back. I want to go back to work. But... Uh, Anyway, we're all in this together. We're we're alone together, and uh, nobody I'd rather nobody I'd rather be in this in this foxhole with uh, than you all. That's for sure. Well, listen. Let's get started this morning. A a, a good good really good passage from uh, from Second Peter. You know, First and Second Peter are just wonderful books. I uh, I know uh, I know they're 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 favorites uh, for some of our Sunday school teachers because I mean they're really focused. They're um, the, the whole point of First and Second Peter is, hey, this is not our home. We have a home, and so how we live out the rest of our days here is very important. Let's not, let's not, uh, let's not waste these days that we have uh, to intermingle and to be involved in the mission of God. Almost, uh, you know, that, that, that thought that we talked about yesterday from, uh, from, the, uh, from the passage in John's Gospel. But this morning, with that in mind, with Peter's, uh, with Peter's whole mindset at this point in his life and his ministry, 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, I, I highlighted uh, verses 10 and 11, but I really want to even, even go a little deeper and, and take the next couple. Verses 10 through 13, and then, then we'll talk about it. So, so listen to Peter as, uh, as he's talking to, uh, as, as, as he's writing his letter to the church. Okay, so again, he's writing to believers. He's writing to those who are following Christ. And this is what he says in 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Verse 11, therefore, since all of these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. That's a, that's a good that's a good frame uh, of uh, uh, perspective uh, for somebody like me. Um, if I'm going to look beyond my present circumstance at all, far better for me to keep my gaze fixed on the, uh, that which will not be destroyed, that which is eternal. And when we recognize that heaven and earth will all be changed, there will be a new heaven and there will be a new earth. And if time would allow, I guess, of course, what do we, you know, what do we have? What do we have? Well, we have nothing but time. Where are we going? Um, but we could elaborate on the whole concept of a new heaven. I under, I get a new earth, but why a new heaven? What is up with that? I, you know, uh, I would be speculating on that. I certainly have some thoughts on that, but I, I would be speculating on that. But what I know is God created this earth with a plan that he, that, that we broke and that he intervened and provided a redemptive plan in order that his plan might be renewed and, uh, and restored. But in the process, this earth will be destroyed. The day is coming when this earth will be destroyed. We're where Christ will come like a thief in the night and will snatch away his church. And with that in mind, that should be, that should be what we dwell on. That should we, be what we meditate on. What manner of people should we be in conduct 
and even in perspective. And when we place all of our focus and so much of our focus on holding on to the things of this world, I think, I think we, have, we have been involved in a, in a wonderful 30-day opportunity to reformat our minds as to just how delicate this world really is. It is not self-sufficient. Uh, I think the whole world has recognized in the last 30 days we are not as in control as we once thought we were. Uh, the scripture says that God holds all things together. And the day will come when he will let go. And when he lets go, I think we, have, we, we are only beginning to see just a glimpse of what a, uh, a powerful thing his presence holding us in control really is. We're not in control. Uh, we, good heavens, we can't control the day we go back to work. One minuscule virus that we can't even see with the naked eye has brought the earth to its knees. And the scripture tells us, and Peter reminds us, that there is a day coming that God will restore all that he entailed and it will plan for, uh, it, will, it will detail a new heaven and a new earth. And so with that in mind, what kind of people should we be? What should our conduct look like? How should we be living based on that truth? And that reality. Heaven and earth will pass away. The things that I possess will pass away. But the soul is eternal. And the human soul will spend forever with God or separated from God. And that will never change. That will never, that will never be altered. Sin has no authority to break that eternal truth. You and I were created for an eternal relationship with God, as was everyone in your family, as was everyone in your neighborhood, as was everyone that you work or used to work with. The eternal soul was made to spend forever with God. We broke that. Our sin changed that. Our sin altered that. We had the authority to break God's plan. We did. And in the goodness of God, he has created a new plan a new way where we might be uh, salvaged, saved, reclaimed. Um, If you've received him, if you've asked him to forgive your sin and to come in your life and to be the Lord of your life. And now as a redeemed people who are living for an eternal destiny in uh, in an eternal relationship with the Lord, how should that influence the way in which we live today? in our conduct, in a sense of seeking to honor God. It's almost like this is, a, this is the preseason where we have opportunity to, to live right with God and to begin practicing living what God values and what God holds dear in preparation for eternity that God has destined for us. What manner of people ought we be in conduct? and in righteousness. Those are Peter's, uh, that's Peter's question and challenge for the church of his day, and it rings just as true for us in our day as well. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you that no, uh, no weapon formed against us will prosper. We're grateful, Lord, that, um, that nothing can separate us from the love of God, that no power of hell can change your plan for eternity. And we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit working in us and through us might be fitting us, altering us, tailoring us for that day and really tailoring us even to be effective in reaching our family and friends today. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would empower us, would change our conduct, would change our temperament, and would begin to flow through us that the signs and wonders and the miracles of a miracle-working God might be seen through his church and through his people. For my brothers and sisters who are watching today, we pray your protection over us again today. We thank you for your faithfulness and for your provision 
for us today. And we pray that we would not let our hearts be troubled, but instead, Lord, that we might, uh, that we might utilize this time and these days to grow better in our understanding of who you are and who we are in you. We are grateful for the eternal promise, the eternal truth, the eternal hope that we have in you through Jesus Christ. And we pray that you would use us to make a difference in our world even today. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, listen, happy Monday to you uh, tonight at uh, tonight at nine o'clock. It's Nick at night. I love that uh, with the devotion that he'll be bringing. And uh, you can check the website and find out all of the things that are going on uh, in the church over the course of this week and even things that we're preparing for. Obviously, with the May 3rd date that has been set uh, by the governor of, of the state of Missouri anyway, that will affect uh, the, the women's retreat. Uh, we, there's no way that we'll be able to do that with, uh, with, the, um, with the ban uh, that's still in place. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a skepticism as to whether or not the men's retreat uh, is going to be able to go forth uh, at this point uh, in mid-May. But we're just watching it from day to day. And you know what? If we need to alter our plans, uh, it doesn't mean that we'll live in a vacuum and, it, and we'll do nothing. It means we'll, uh, when we know what we cannot do, then we can ask the very valid question, but what can we do? And so uh, that, is, uh, that is certainly the plan. Praying for you, and we love you, and uh, God bless you all. Christ is still all on the throne, and we're going to be okay. <laughs>